Touch your heels right now. Basically, I have problems with both of my hips, but the right one, the chunk of cartilage that's gone, totally gone, so it, it, there is a lot of pain there sometimes. Yeah, it comes and goes. There's good days and bad days. I was seen by a physiotherapist. She assessed me by an occupational therapist who gave me all kinds of hints, and then by a nurse. My GP was involved. I've seen an orthopedic surgeon. So you start to get a team of people. If a person knows what to do, you can see still a high quality of activity. You can live your life fully and completely simply by knowing that you have some choices that you can make about how you're going to live with osteoarthritis. Like you, these people have been diagnosed with osteoarthritis in their hip or knee joints. It's not uncommon. One in ten Canadians have osteoarthritis, and these numbers are increasing as the population ages. What's becoming apparent is that those with osteoarthritis may reduce pain and improve their quality of life by taking an active role in managing their own health. As well, self-management and early intervention may slow down disease progression. This program looks at self-managing your osteoarthritis through goal setting, exercise, nutrition, pain management, and reducing joint stress during everyday activities. There are over 100 different types of arthritis. Considered to be a degenerative form of arthritis, osteoarthritis is the most common type and involves breakdown of joint cartilage. Cartilage is the hard, smooth tissue that caps the ends of the bones. It acts as a shock absorber and lets your bones glide smoothly over one another. As osteoarthritis develops, the cartilage frays and may wear away entirely. The bones, with their exposed nerve endings, rub directly against each other and joint movement is painful. Because the body can't produce more cartilage, in some people it responds by producing more bone. These bumpy growths, or bone spurs, may cause additional pain and decreased joint movement. Osteoarthritis can develop in any joint, but it usually affects the joints that carry body weight, the lower back, hips, knees, and feet. The neck and finger joints are other commonly affected areas. Signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis are pain, stiffness, swelling, and loss of joint movement or range of motion. Your family doctor can request an x-ray to confirm a diagnosis of osteoarthritis. I was doing a hike and I started to have extreme pain after the hike, which was most unusual for me. I went to the doctor and she was going to recommend me for hip surgery because my x-ray showed osteoarthritis. And that was a big, big shock to me because I thought just people who didn't do anything had arthritis. I, there was a misconception on my part because I am very, very active. The exact cause of osteoarthritis is not known. A variety of factors, including age, increased weight, injury, and heredity, are all linked to osteoarthritis. Well, I started to pay attention to my knees when I discovered that all of my siblings uh, were having knee problems of one kind or another, which our father had. Uh, but weight is a lifelong issue for me. Uh, I, I have jokingly said, and in a way not so jokingly, that I've been on a diet since 1953. Uh, unfortunately, about half the time, so uh, when I should be on it all the time. So I did some uh, flat water canoeing for 10 years, which you know put a lot of strain on that hip. But um, to say that it's because of this and that, I would be speculating. There is no cure for osteoarthritis. It ranges in severity from early to late stages. At the most severe stage, people generally opt for surgical joint replacement. However, there are ways to manage the condition at all stages. Symptoms vary among people, so it's best not to compare yourself with others. You may have good and bad days. Staying active is an important part of managing your osteoarthritis. Movement keeps the joint healthy. Putting a joint through its full range of motion pumps surrounding fluid over the cartilage. Like a sea sponge that absorbs its food from the ocean, the cartilage takes up nutrients from the fluid moving over its surface. 
mechanical pressure squeezes out the wastes, which are released into the surrounding fluid. This process of nutrient absorption and waste removal allows the cartilage to stay healthy. I think the uh, key still is to uh, move, exercise. If you don't use it, you lose it. So, like it or not, I keep walking. When the weather's good, it's not too bad. Can I tell people if you want to take an active role in managing things and have a plan as to what you're going to do and setting yourself... By setting short and long-term goals, you can monitor your progress and stay on track. Keeping a logbook may help you identify your current habits and set goals. Structure your goals according to the SMART formula, that is, S, which stands for specific, M for measurable, A for action-based, R for realistic, and T for timely. For example, instead of setting an open-ended goal like, I'm going to start exercising more, consider a goal that incorporates all the SMART points, such as, this month, I'm going to walk around the park at the end of the block for 10 minutes, three times a week, to increase my exercise endurance. The second goal statement is much easier to start and stick to because it outlines a clear plan of action. Set a long-term goal and then break it up into smaller steps or short-term goals. For example, a long-term goal might be in two months' time, I will lose 10 pounds through healthy eating and regular exercise. Short-term goals could be, I will eat seven fruits or vegetable servings six days of the week. And this month, I'll make an appointment with a dietitian to look at my eating plan. When you start to just measure your goals in a much shorter time frame. You know, can I go out for dinner with these friends? Can I get across the street? Because I couldn't run. I mean, I could hardly walk on some days. So what am I doing today if I need to get somewhere? To keep on track, write down your goals and put them where you can see them. Update and modify the goals regularly. Tell family and friends about your goals and involve them in your plans. Okay. So it's all about keeping with the plan, yes. the game plan. And have a backup plan. If it's raining and you can't walk outside, try the gym or walk through the mall. Surround yourself with people who are going to be positive with you and for you. But you want to set small goals. You want to start small and then slowly build up. And don't be too hard on yourself. Things may be difficult at the beginning and you may have those bad days, but you will hopefully have those good days as well. As you go through each segment in this video program, think of and write down the goals or plans you can set for yourself in the areas of exercise, nutrition, pain management, and protecting your joint. I think we have to have a very positive, positive attitude. We have to accept and understand our condition and we need to then look at what can we do and we need to get the best resources to help us where we need external help. Community resources are, are essential to managing and that starts with your doctor who helps you make decisions guides you through decisions, all the way down to decisions you make entirely on your own. And in between, there are referral services, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, orthotic specialists, books, tapes, written material that will help you. But you have to be the person who orchestrates all of this. And, you know, when you get a diagnosis like arthritis, and it's degenerative in nature, and there's no cure, it control's instantly taken away from you. So one way to gain control back was through education. Education shows up in the form of groups and forums and workshops. And you get yourself around people, uh, younger, older, same age, that are suffering as well. So there's a great sense of community and, and a great sense of you're not alone. View the other program segments to see how effectively managing your osteoarthritis can lead to less joint pain greater independence, and overall better health.